Hello and welcome to today's video where we'll continue talking about sensors in Android Studio. I will show you an example of using the proximity sensor, of course, the easy way or the easiest example I can think of when it comes to using sensors in uh, Android Studio. We will use the Java programming language. And as I always do, I will start by showing you the application that we will build. It has a very simple user interface, only one text view. And we use this text view to always display or to display in real time the distance between the mobile phone and whatever is in front of it using the proximity sensor on top. Okay, so let's go to Android Studio and see the code and see exactly how it runs. You start by opening Android Studio and you will create a new project that will be a empty activity project for phones and tablets. And once your project is loaded completely and you see your main activity Java file and activity main XML file, you can start to work on the application. Let's start with the easy part with activity main XML. And this is where we have a text view. You can't see it because it's very small, but searching for the size attribute, you can increase the text size as such. And you can see it says, hello world. Well, we don't care what it says because we will change this text anyway, but we need to have an ID in order for us to reference this text view. So we call it text view, just simple text view. This is all that we have to do regarding the user interface. Uh, we have this constraint layout. This is why you see all these constraints all around our text view. So we go to the main activity Java file now and here, I've enlarged the size of the text so you can see it better. You have only the main activity class, which extends up compact activity. Now, in order for you to work with sensors, you need to implement a sensor event listener. So you will say implement sensor event listener. And this, you can regard it as being similar to a uh, on-click listener, for example, for our own item click listener, when you have uh, buttons or lists or so on. However, this is a sensor event listener. When the sensor data changes, we will execute some code. But until we get to that part, we see this red underlining. We go to the red light bulb and we need to implement some methods. And these methods are on sensor changed, on accuracy changed. So with both of these selected, we click OK. And now they are inserted here. What I usually do, I will comment here and say on create, just to keep track of my methods and where they finish or where they stop. Now there is one more thing to do. We have a on create method. We have these two. So this is for the main activity, this method. These two are for the sensor listener for the sensor event listener. And we need to implement one more method. And for this, you right click, you say generate, overwrite method, and you will look for on stop. And I saw it here already. If you remember the Android application lifecycle, this on stop will be called just before on destroy and we need it later on when we want to stop the sensor. Now we can go and declare some variables. These are the variables that we will use for the text view to display the text. Our sensor manager, you will see in a second what exactly we do with each of them. And for this, we go into on create method. Again, I find it faster to write the code and I'll explain it step by step. So you will not stay for 20 minutes here. I think it's uh, the moment for me to stop a bit and explain what I've done so far. And starting with these variables, which have been declared above. Once we go into onCreate method, 
We start by referencing the text view. So we associated using find view by ID with the control in the user interface. And it's only one this time, this one text view over here. Then we have this sensor manager. So we are calling the sensor service and make sure after you write get system service, you will have a red underlining. So you have to cast this as a sensor manager. This is what you see on this line. Then we need to get the default sensor. And for this, our sensor, we need to tell the system that it's a proximity sensor. And for this, we get our sensor manager. We use get default sensor and the sensor type that we are looking to use is this type, the proximity. Now, your device might or might not have a proximity sensor. So in order for your application not to crash, you have to check if our sensor, the one that we have referenced above, is or not available. If our sensor is null, this means that there is no such sensor in our device. So we display a toast message to the user. And in the context of this activity, we say this text, no proximity sensor found in device, we select a length of time to display this toast message and then show. I've uh, moved this line of code a bit to the left so you can see all of it. Then we finish this application because we don't want to continue running this app if there is no proximity sensor. If, however, there is such a sensor, and this is the else part of the if condition, then we want to use the sensor manager to register a listener and this is the sensor event listener, this one. And we take this listener, then we take our sensor, the proximity one, and then a sensor delay. So this is what we have until this point. The only problem is that once you register a sensor, you have to make sure you deregister because otherwise it will stay on forever. Well, forever until your battery dies. This is why we've created this on stop method and we override it. And here we put the code that will make the sensor stop when the application will be destroyed or actually just before. So we say sensor manager on register listener and we just say this. The only thing that's left is for us to actually do something with the information from the sensor because until this point, we checked if the sensor is available, we registered the sensor. We also make sure to deregister or unregister the sensor. And the only thing that's left is to actually do something with the information provided. And for this, we go to on sensor changed. To remind you over here, we have this event set as parameter. So we use this event and take the sensor. We check the type. If it's available with, I'm sorry, if it's the same as a proximity sensor, then we will take the text view and we'll set the content of this text view to the plain text. This is hard-coded text. If you don't want to have this, you can use a string reference, but just to keep everything simple, I've hard-coded the text here. It says distance to object in front of the proximity sensor. So distance to that object will be from event, we take the values and just display them. So this will be, uh, these values will always be the ones measured at that particular time. And this is all that we have to do. We can save everything and we can launch the application to see how it behaves. As you can see, the application is now loaded in the emulator and it says distance to object 5.7. Well, what exactly does this mean? If you go here where it's, oh, you have the three dots and it says extended controls, you click, then you will have this extended controls panel with different tabs. If you select the virtual sensor, you will see here ambient temperature, magnetic field, light intensity, and for example, proximity. As you can change here the distance, the application responds and also updates the distance that it measures. So this is how you can access different types of sensors and you can use them to test your application. And there is something which I have not done yet still the application works. If your application will not run, you could try to set some permissions. I repeat, it wasn't the case here. It worked without setting any permissions, but let me just show you. If you go to the project and you open the app manifest folder, you find the Android manifest XML file. 
you double click and inside this file over here above application, you could drop this line of code. It says user permission, Android name, and it has inside the commas, Android hardware sensor proximity. This should allow the application permission to use the proximity sensor. If your application doesn't work, you might try to add this line of code. So this has been the example about using the proximity sensor in Android applications. I hope you have learned something new today. I hope this is going to be useful for you. And until we meet in next videos, until you come back to check other videos and learn more things, keep practicing, keep learning, and take care. Thank you for watching.